Kia ora. Welcome to the uh, Friday the 28th um, of October 2022. As I mentioned, uh, work has been a little bit challenging this week. Um, and uh, my rambles are um, suffering as a, as a consequence, but you know, that is how, that is how things are. Um, combined with that, and it looks like I've done some damage to my left foot. <laughs> Go figure, my right foot came right, and then my left foot came wrong. So, that's a bit all back to front. So, I fear to be limping a little. Um, but it's because I am. It's also because why, also because why, because it's also why, but I'm recording this a little later in the day. Because uh, I've been ice packing it and resting it up. So, apologise for that. Um... Dawn is away at a food forage course uh, at uh, the Holler, Nicole's place, from uh, Living Free in Tennessee. So uh, she's out learning all about uh, how to do food forests with uh, Nick Ferguson and um, a bunch of other bunch of other people, which is kind of cool. Um, so the opportunity came up for that, and uh, so we, we jumped at that. So it's it's money, I know, but. Um, um, money well uh, spent these opportunities should be seized um and uh i'm guessing from a from a debrief when when she gets back uh on sunday we'll um we'll be uh comparing notes i guess and probably doing some more decisions around you know plans for next year and spring and all that all that good stuff um Sunday we'll also be picking up the auger and the chipper shredder, which finally arrived. So a bit of a double double delivery there, which will be which will be good. Um, all right. So anyway, I won't make this a long uh, ramble. Uh, one of the things that's been on both of our collective minds um, is the winterizing the RV. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Uh, so. You know, there are a bunch of commercial options that are available for skirting, skirting your, your RV and and effectively it's just filling the gaps between where, you know, the RV is raised up and um, and where the ground is, where all the cold and, and stuff kind of measures. So, uh, if you're travelling, then logically, you know, getting a, a portable skirting solution if you're heading into environments that are requiring that that level of uh, winterization um, is probably a good investment um, I don't know from experience but that seems to be a pretty good investment to me because you want to do anything you can to cut cut down heat loss and apparently these actually work pretty well in, in summer as well for moderating temperatures because you know ultimately um, you are uh, you're, you're regulating your environment and um, yeah, that, that kind of brings that, that curve down, I guess. But anyway, our immediate concern is winter. So it's getting a bit colder in the mornings and we want to we want to cut down on, on heating. Um, so we will be looking probably at the straw bale, straw bale option. I've just been mathing it out today. Um, I think we'll, I think we can get away with probably 60 straw bales. Um, we may actually get away with fewer than that. Um, the challenge is, you know, the height of the straw bales. The typical straw bale is about 24 by 12 by 16. Um, though, depending on where you get them from, that can vary. But um, we know this from experience. But the, um, ask me how, sheep. My apologies for that. This is going to be a weird disconnect in the video. Um, I stupidly had my music running on my phone and got back with a Bluetooth range of the of the speakers in the RV. So, uh, hmm, lesson learned. Uh, where was I? Where was I going? Talking about um, straw bales. Um, so yeah, so the your typical bales, twenty four by twelve by sixteen. It's so going to make for a strange, strange blip because I'm, I'm not going to bother editing this. It'll just be like random, strange event happens at the end of video, and then oh, lo and behold, back again. Um, I'll stick a fader or dissolve or something and it'll be fine. 
Uh, so, <laughs> all right, mathing again. 24 by 16 by 12 is is a typical is a typical straw bale size. So that's that's the matrix I'm working to, and uh, we've got a we've got about 30 foot of length to deal with. Um, yeah, that's the the dimensions that we're kind of playing around with here. And this is the the, the highest side, so this is the largest gap to deal with. Um, I don't think one straw bale is going to fit that gap. Um, I could be pleasantly wrong. Um, but um, I'm not entirely sure. So part of me is along the lines of uh, I should allow for um, double the amount. But then the other side is we have to have access to our storage compartments and we don't want to cover up things like the behind me um, hot water heater uh, and there are various cables and things like that as well so it's, it's a bit of, it's a little bit of a tricky one um, so what we will probably end up doing I think is um, doing what we need to do to basically make make it work um so we're probably gonna have to halve some of the straw bales perhaps to make a make them the minimum gap um we'll just have to see anyway so anyway bottom line is um, i don't think we're going to need more than 60 60 straw bales for the whole thing and that's allowing for double double the number along each length and and on the rear of the rv uh, for double heighting and you know, having said that, and uh, we we probably don't even need fifty straw bales. We probably we probably get away with uh, forty because we do need to leave gaps to get in. Um, and on the other side, you know, I've got access pipes and and things like that. So you know, you you've got to be realistic with these things. But we shall uh, we shall have a crack at it and. Um, video the results as always and and just for posterity and uh we'll see if that, that makes a difference um if i get a chance i'll try and i'll try and actually do some some temperature measurements but it's a bit up and down at the moment to be honest so kind of hard to say whether that that will actually work anywho um that's today really is just thinking about um resting up and thinking about uh, the next steps for winterizing the RV. Um, I will mention that the straw bale bags will go into probably um, heavy duty outdoor contractor bags um, to be wrapped up and kept dry and also to keep you know rodents and things out because they like straw. Um, as I said we have to be able to get you know underneath the RV if we need to um, and the other side of it is that putting them in bags minimizes the um, you know, the chance of you know errant gas leaks causing fires and straw which is not a great thing you know, little pig little pig burn my house down kind of stuff but the um the end result will be probably a little little clunky but it should should uh, do for this initial winter longer term um assuming we don't need to move the rv um we may actually even consider using it as as one of the experiments for um for earth bagging you know replace some of the some of the straw bales with with earth bags and uh that'll give us the opportunity to get some of the frames in place for sifting and all that kind of stuff um i have a root cellar in mind already for that um which i'd like to kind of get done and then will that'll probably double as a tornado shelter um but Again, I don't think that that's going to happen uh, before winter hits us, so we'll just have to see how we go on that one. A lot of this is dominated by by work and, and fatigue, and uh, quite and since I keep doing things to chunks of my body, um, various limbs and things, then uh, also dictated by, by health, shall we say. Um, old age is a beast when you when you sprain something then something gets something gets sprained so 
yeah, it doesn't recover in one or two days like it used to. Anywho, um, that's all for me today. My apologies again for the weird, weird break in the video. And um, we'll see about uh, rambling again tomorrow. It's supposed to be cloudy and rainy, so uh, I'll probably definitely try and find a break to go and do, do something then. Take care. Ciao.